Our keynote speaker this evening is a woman whose life was changed on October 9th, uh, excuse me, October 6, 2009. That's the day she resigned as director of the largest abortion facility and corporation in the nation, Planned Parenthood. Now she advocates for life in the womb instead of destroying it. Now she travels the country sharing her story and has appeared on The O'Reilly Factor, The Huckabee Report, Focus on the Family, Daily Broadcasts. Tonight she comes to tell her story. Please help me welcome Abby Johnson. Thank you. Thank you to my friends for standing up. <laughs> oh, it is good to be with all of you here tonight. Um, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of funny actually for me to be in a room here with all of you and all of the legislators that are here about I guess about a year and a half ago, I uh, sat in a room similar to this, and <clears throat> it was probably a little bit bigger. It was in Houston, and there were some politicians there, people that you may be familiar with. Um, Jessica Farrar was there, uh, Garnet Coleman was there, and one particular person was there of importance, and uh, that was Hillary Clinton. I know you're all very impressed. <clears throat> and I, uh, oh, and another person was there. Uh, Bill White was there. Oh. Bill White was there. He actually, uh, he was always at Planned Parenthood events, spread the word. And uh, he was there to give the, uh, opening, the opening speech for us. But the reason I was there at that conference was because I had been named the 2008 Employee of the Year. And, and that was about a year and a half ago. So now, I was at that dinner about a year and a half ago, and so now to be... Or was that two and a half years ago, I guess? Two and a half years ago. So now to be sitting in a room <clears throat> with all of you, who some of, some of you legislators I know because I have been in your office pretty often promoting Planned Parenthood's agenda. So it's good to be on the right side of life and you can take that however you want to. You know, I. I did work for Planned Parenthood for eight years. I started off as a volunteer, and, and I, okay, I'm sorry. I like to be mobile, so I'm going to move this. Okay. Um, I, I worked at Planned Parenthood for eight years. I started off as a volunteer, and uh, I, was, I went to Texas A&M University. All right, and uh, I was a junior there, and I was just meandering through the student center going uh, to the cafeteria to get something to eat, and I, I looked over, and I saw this booth, and it was donned in hot pink, and that's my favorite color, and so it caught my attention. I walked over to the booth, and there was this woman there, and she started telling me about Planned Parenthood, and she asked me what I knew about Planned Parenthood. I said, you know, I really don't know anything about it, honestly. Uh, I grew up in a small town in Louisiana and then moved to a small town in Texas, so we didn't have a Planned Parenthood around the towns that I lived, and, and uh, I knew that when I was in high school, I, I told people that I was pro-life if the abortion topic ever came up, but, you know, I didn't really, I couldn't really debate the ins and outs of abortion. It didn't frequently come up around the dinner table, and so, you know, I, I just said I didn't really know anything about Planned Parenthood, and she started telling me that Planned Parenthood was an organization that provided 
free services to men and women throughout the community and they provided annual exams and they provided testing for cholesterol and diabetes and all these wonderful services. And I stood there and looked at her and I said, that is so sweet. <laughs> and I said, well, my gosh, Planned Parenthood sounds so great. And I said, well, what would I do if I was going to volunteer? And she started to tell me that Planned Parenthood also provided abortions. And I remember telling her at that time, well, you know what, I, I grew up pro-life. And she said, I know, honey. But you know, if abortion wasn't illegal, if, if abortion wasn't legal, and if abortion were made illegal, don't you understand that there would be thousands of women dying on the streets because of back alley abortions? Now, you don't want that, do you? And me, this naive college student who didn't really understand the ins and outs of abortion, looked at her and said, oh my gosh, that would be terrible. No, of course I don't want that. And she said, you would hate to be a reason that there would be such a huge setback for women in this country. You don't want to, you don't want to do that, do you? And I said, no, that would be terrible. And so I, I tell people, I guess I had sucker written across my forehead because she handed me a, a Planned Parenthood volunteer application right there on the spot. I filled it out and the next week I was volunteering. And after I graduated from A&M, I can always count on you, you know? Sometimes I go up north and I say A&M and it's like crickets. <laughs> I have to remember where I am. Uh, so after I graduated with my undergrad, they offered me a job. And I started working there. I made pretty good money. You've got to pay your, your employees that work in the abortion industry pretty good money to keep them there. I got really good benefits, good perks. And, and I thought, this is great. I'm helping women. I really believed that I was saving the lives of women. I really, really believed that. And after I, I was going to graduate school and getting my degree in counseling psychology, they promoted me again, and then they promoted me again. And then all of a sudden, I was the executive director of this abortion center where I had worked, and, and they also did family planning there. And so I believe that I was doing the right thing. And ironically, um, the people that retire with Planned Parenthood, the people that they think are going to be there for the rest of their working life, you know what they call them? They call them lifers. So I was a Planned Parenthood lifer. I wonder what they call me now. I don't want to know. So anyway, I, I was a Planned Parenthood lifer. I thought I was going to retire with Planned Parenthood. And then all of a sudden, in 2009, things started changing for me. And I tell people, I'm not really sure if it was that the organization was actually changing or if it was that the truth was finally coming out in front of me. And that I was finally starting to see what this organization was really about. I had a meeting with my supervisor in August of 2009 and, and the way that Planned Parenthood sets up their budget is pretty simple. They have a certain number of clients that they want you to see in each one of your budgets. You have a family planning budget and you have an abortion budget. And they have a certain number of clients that they want you to see for each clinic. And I was looking at my budget and I was comparing my budget to my, my current, my future budget to my previous year budget and I thought, something's not right. Something must be wrong here. Because the numbers of patients that they wanted me to see for fiscal year 2010 in my family planning clinic had pretty much stayed the same. But the number of patients that they wanted me to see for my abortion clinic had almost doubled. And I thought, this doesn't seem right. I mean, we're in the business of reducing the number of, uh, the number of abortions, right? Didn't we hear Obama say that? It must be true. And I really believe that that's what we were doing. I really believe that we were preventing the need for abortion. And that's really what I thought that we were doing, honestly. 